The only difference is now we're going to be putting this stuff into motion. So I'm going to go over one, and then I'm going to give you guys basically one to go ahead and try on your own. And that's really basically all the really the time we have, although we will have more time on, as I mentioned on Friday, to kind of cover stuff. So you guys have h of x equals 3 divided by x cubed minus 4x. You guys can see I kind of have some steps here. The first thing is to identify your vertical asymptotes. All we simply need to do to identify vertical asymptotes is set our denominator equal to 0 and solve. So I basically go ahead and say my denominator here is x cubed minus 4x equals 0. Then I just go ahead and solve. Well, in this case, I can factor out an x. Does everybody agree with me that x equals plus or minus 2? Do I really need to spend time solving anymore? All right. So your asymptotes, if you guys remember, are going to be your dotted lines. Remember we talked about those in discontinuity? Those are going to be your lines that your graph is not going to be continuous on, right? So we have, the, so the first thing when you're graphing, I always like to first do my asymptotes. I'll go through that when we get to it. Not your butt. So the next thing is when we go ahead and take a look at this, step number two is to identify your horizontal asymptotes. So what the horizontal asymptote said, which was exactly in the same thing we wrote up there before and which we've talked about and reviewed again, horizontal asymptotes is going to be, you're going to look at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. So the degree in the numerator, hopefully you guys understand, is 0. Okay. So n represents the degree in the numerator. d represents the degree in the denominator. In this case, when the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator, y equals 0 is your horizontal asymptote. Does everybody see that? Okay. So now I create a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay. Um, now, in the next case, now we simply need to, or sorry, y equals 0 is your horizontal asymptote. The next step, which is to check for symmetry, which is the exact same thing as what we did before where we're even and odd. But what's nice about checking for symmetry, ladies and gentlemen, is if you know you have symmetry, all you need to do is graph one side, right? And then you can just reflect it based on the symmetry. So to check for symmetry, all we're simply going to do is evaluate for f of negative x. So therefore, that's 3 over negative x cubed minus 4 times negative x. So as you guys can see, do I have symmetry here? Is this the exact same? No. So therefore, it's not symmetrical about the y-axis, meaning this is not even. However, do I have the exact same but opposite signs, basically? Could I factor out an angle? Yes, yeah. I do. So guess what? This is symmetrical about the origin, meaning whatever I have here, I can just ref well, not on the other side. That would be symmetrical about the y-axis. Here, I can just reflect and then reflect over. You reflect over the x-axis, reflect over the y-axis, like reflecting over the origin. Okay? And I'll show you exactly my example. Now, step number four is to choose points. All right, here's where it kind of comes into a discrepancy. And I'm kind of going low on time, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it a shorter way. But I will show you guys at least a couple ways to identify this. My, what I recommend you guys doing, if you do not have a graphing calculator, if you do not have a graphing calculator, is to choose two points. Do I know right there? OK. My recommendation is to choose two points to the left and to the right of each asymptote so you understand what the graph looks like. If you have a graphing calculator, you can just graph it and then click the table value and figure out what it is. If you're doing your homework, I would plug it into Google so you can still see what the graph is. But you're going to want to make sure you guys can evaluate for points. So what I'm going to do is let's evaluate. I'll just evaluate for these two points to the right. Okay. So I'm going to evaluate for f of 1, 2, 3. So let's evaluate for f of 3. What happened to what x? Um, for step three, when it's negative 
Oh, it's there. Sorry. So that becomes 27 minus 12 is 15. Right? 3 over 15 is going to be approximately 1 fifth, which we can rewrite as 0.2. Only time when I'm graphing do I like writing them as decimals. Okay, Then let's go ahead and check into, um, let's do f of 4, see what that gives me. So if I did, if I, so if I did f of 4, I'd get 3 over 4 cubed minus 4 times 4. So 3 cubed is 64, right? Minus 16 is going to be 48. So 1 16th, which my calculator shows me, is 0 0.0625. Do you guys see the pattern? Where is this going closer and closer to? Origin. Well, no, what number is this getting closer and closer to? Zero, Zero right? So what I want you guys to understand, listen, listen. Through these two points, what are the asymptotes? Asymptotes, we know the graph cannot cross at the vertical asymptote, right? Asymptotes, vertical asymptotes represent values that make the graph discontinuous, correct? That means they're not a part of the graph. That means they're not a part of the domain. So we use these asymptotes all right, to represent, help us with our domain. But it's also what's important about the asymptotes is that's where the graph approaches. Your graph approaches your asymptotes. So if my point's here, the next one's closer to 0, do you guys agree with me that it's going to keep on getting closer and closer to 0? Right? But then it also has to go down and approach this asymptote. So it's going to look something like this. OK? Yes? Did I write in the? Oh, those are positive, aren't they? <laughs> Oops. I wrote those as negative for some reason. Thank you. Sorry about that. Exact same thing. I just, for some reason, I wrote these as negative. I don't know why. OK. So, so that's the last one. That's those. And then you would have to pick points in between here to figure out what these values are and what kind of shape this goes through. Well, since it has to approach these two asymptotes, you could plug in two, but really in your calculator is going to be the best. And what you guys will see is this is going to approach like this. Now. Listen, listen, how can I use symmetry? Remember, I said this is symmetrical, right? It's symmetrical about the origin. So therefore, you reflect it over the y-axis, reflect it over the x-axis. So therefore, the graph, the sketch of the graph, is going to look like this. And that's my final graph. Done.